Cool. Go straight into it. We've got the uh, new album uh, out next week. Um, yeah, yeah. Get ready, because I'm going to butcher them. Etiman Yanka. That's pretty good, man. That's fine. Oh, all right. Yeah, yeah. No, it's my level. It's great. You're not the first one to ask for, about the name, so... <laughs> Uh, can you explain a little bit about the title? Yeah, sure. So um, it's loosely based around um, sort of, we use it to sort of relate to the sort of towers and the, the sort of storyline within the within the album, but it comes from, I think we got it from the Etmananki, which is the sort of old um, Tower of Babel myth, essentially. Um, it's an old sort of Sumatran tower that that myth's based around um and then we sort of chop that in half and we use parts of it um to refer to some of the um actual culture within the within the album narrative cool i mean I've, as you might expect a lot of uh, this kind of thing i've only heard from melakesh lyrics so yeah i'm still learning about it you know, so. <laughs> yeah, no. That's grand. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's always nice to have a, a hard one to pronounce as well. Though. Yeah. <laughs> um, musically, what would you say is uh, different from Ashram? Um, well, most obvious one to some people probably be we've now got um, full time synth player in, the, in there as well. Um, so we're sharing, we used. Um, some synths on parts of the track, sort of main, mainly more sort of atmospheric sort of parts, a um, little bits and pieces of texturizing. Um, whereas, yeah, with At the Men, we've actually gone full whack with that now, um, which has been really fun, to be honest, really nice to play around with. Um, apart from that, I think we've probably, from a sharing, there's probably a bit more variation in what's happening sort of vocal wise a little bit um there's definitely a few i don't know if there's more cleans on this than the last one but i think it certainly changes up a little bit um vocal wise with what we've done um and then i think guitar wise sort of thing we've definitely i think well both me and victor probably say we've probably come on since the sharing sort of songwriting a little bit added complexity there um mm. a bit more sort of prog sort of feel to parts of it um, yeah. But yeah, no, we've been sort of very happy with um, the sort of progression that we've come on with as a band from last album to this one. Cool. I mean, the progression is um, it's very clear to see, you know, I mean, if you look at the like, comments on your videos and tracks and things like this, the yeah, most yeah. common one I seem to see is, oh, it's like Opeth and Mastodon yeah. had a baby. Yeah? I've seen that <laughs> one a few times now. It's... Which is amazing to see. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it's, it's... I mean, getting compared to Opeth, it's like, sick <laughs> that's uh that's a, that's a big one for me um but yeah i think definitely that sort of side that sort of more big epic sort of prog sort of sound especially that sort of earlier opeth sort of sound does i mean i suppose with the later stuff as well like how they they've gone with a lot of the synth recently and they're more sort of 70s sound although we've not really done that sort of 70s thing but um yeah yeah that's 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 always nice and uh yeah a few people commenting um obviously it's great how to have that's mm. thing because we've been sat on this for quite a while now but seeing sort of people commenting on there and a lot of people coming back from the share and i was saying like again as you said like people commenting on how they can see the pro progression which yeah. is definitely nice to see that it's not just us thinking that <laughs> <laughs> uh, you mentioned that you've been um sat on it for a little while now when did you finish recording the album um it would have been um, prob when was it? September 2019, I think we finished it the studio. Um, so by the time it's out next week, we'll have actually we'll have been sat on it for the best part of a year and a half. Um, yeah. So, I mean, we were meant to, it was the original plan, and the plan with um, Metal Blade as well was to have that out last summer, and be touring last mm -hmm. summer, obviously with COVID and the way everything's gone. Um, yeah. We decided it was just in everyone's best interest just to put it back until oh and the plan was to put it back until March when we were like, oh, yeah, we'll be fine by Torin. <laughs> the gigs will be back on by March. It'll be grand. What could go wrong? Yeah. Um, but yeah, obviously there's also only so long we can really uh, sit on the material and uh, it's yeah, it's awesome to finally actually uh, get it out there and have a bit of feedback and just yeah. Yeah, 
seems to be really enjoying it. Which is awesome. Well, yeah, I mean, like you say, people are, are uh, getting into it, and there's all sorts of like favourable comparisons being made. So it's good to you know, it's finally out there, it's not being buried or anything like that. Um, Obviously, it would have had to have come out at some point, but as a British band, unfortunately, you face three big problems, which is not just the pandemic, but Brexit and a yeah. Boris Johnson government. Yes. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, yeah. So even with, as you say, Brexit, we're still very unsure at the moment on how that is going to affect touring going forward. I mean, we're kind of lucky in that uh Victor, the uh, other guitarist vocalist, is um, he's French, so he, he he's fine. <laughs> he can he can go tall. <laughs> the rest of us, um, I mean, yeah, it's just a matter of seeing how that plays out later in the year. Um, we are looking at stuff out in I think October sort of time. We're looking at we've got a few bits and pieces. So obviously, we can't confirm anything yet. Um, yeah. But fingers crossed with that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's very odd. I mean, as someone who's been playing out in bands and going out to Europe to both play and see gigs in like for what, 15, 20 years of my life. It's uh, to that suddenly not exist anymore is very strange and yeah, not, not great for the uh, entertainment industry as a whole. But mm. I don't know, there's talk of obviously musicians, passports, things like this coming in, but whether that's mm. this year, next year, three years down the line, we don't know. But We'll, uh, we'll do what we can. Um, if it's Absolutely, extra, yeah. Costs, it's extra visa costs for, I mean, right now I'll just go play a gig anywhere. Absolutely. <laughs> just sitting in for a year with, with nothing to do. So. Yeah. Well, uh, like you mentioned, uh, you've now got a permanent synth player in the band. You've also got, um, I think it's a new drummer, Jack. Drummer or uh, bassist? Uh, oh, no. So, drummer's Dudley, who's been in it since start. Okay. Um, so, we have new synths. So it's on the album, um, yeah. um, there's a guy, Jack, um, playing Jack Kavanagh. Um, he was playing bass and also did a little bit of guitar on the, on the actual album when we were recording. Um, he since left, and we have a new guy called Greg, who's currently playing bass for us, but he's not actually played any gigs with us. Um, similarly, we've got uh, um, Evelyn, who's she's based down in London, but she's been flying up. Um, to do since um, but they they've both been in the sort of the videos we've been releasing so any of the stuff and the we did a um the omega severa sort of ep single we released have the yeah. sort of blades and characters side to it, which was an old song we redid um but that's with greg and evelyn they re we recorded that with us in october so it's like they've based they've been in the band for about a year now, but, but we've not actually played a gig with them. <laughs> so. no. It's funny, I didn't realise quite what a um, a collective June is, you know, I mean, yeah, yeah. So, I, I mean, saw Edinburgh, yes, I was quite so, surprised when you started talking. Yeah, 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 so I'm I'm, I'm in Leeds at the moment, um, I lived well, I'm in, in Huddersfield, up in Scotland for like 15 years, um, yeah. obviously didn't quite lose the Yorkshire accent, but I moved back here last September. Okay. Um, essentially, but yeah, so we've got uh, Englishman, um, Evelyn's Australian, right. but is based in London, um, Frenchman with Victor, <laughs> um, and then Greg and Dudley are both from Edinburgh. Um, okay. But me, basically, me, Victor, and Dudley all met in Edinburgh. Okay. Um, I was there for about 10 years after I'd sort of worked in, uh, moved across, I was in Glasgow and then moved across for work in Edinburgh and met. Uh, Victor and Dudley through playing in various other bands on the scene. Um, and uh, yeah, so us three have sort of been around since the start. Um, and then a few basic bass player changes over the years. And then, yeah, so new bassist and synth for now for this as well. Cool, man. Um, like you mentioned, you've uh, released a few videos as well, like uh, some live ones in the studio and that kind of thing. You've also done the, uh, the music video itself. Um, it's either Psi 14 or C14 or... It's SI14. SI14, yeah. okay. So it's neither <laughs> of those. Like I say, we don't like to make it easy for people. So. No, you really don't, mate. You really don't. I've been calling you Divine until today. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <That's bad. laughs> I've had that as well. I get that. Yeah. Someone last week was like, for and I just thought you were DVNE. <laughs> so I was like, oh, now I need to come up with acronyms. So, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> But uh, the but the, that video itself is is really cool. It's really um, 
I hesitate to say trippy because it's not quite psychedelic or anything, but it is definitely out there. Yeah, it's yeah. Very um, kind of like Mandy, I guess. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Less yeah. Nicolas sure. Cage. Yeah, no, no Nicolas Cage, unfortunately. We'll see if we can yeah. get him on board for the next one, maybe. Um, but yeah, no, that was that was cool. So we shot that um, half of that shot out in France, um, in Paris. So we went out and all the actual sort of weird, monstery got the, the creature that's all shot where we've got a team of people who are sort of mates of victors from back when he was growing up that um are various videographers and directors of various ilk um so they've they've actually worked with us throughout the years so the old the old first video and stuff on a share and they worked with us on that so it's it's been awesome to work with them again um so yeah we sort of shot that in that was last summer now i think we shot that in a in an old slot house basement in paris as you do um, but that was just all the creature bits, and then all the live stuff we then shot um, up in Edinburgh, basically, in um, November when we could actually all get together and play again, obviously, because yeah, that was another one we start, sort of started filming that, and then lockdown kicked in, so that was another thing that, like, oh, we, yeah, we got a music video took about six months from start to finish as well. So yeah. it's, uh, it's been a fun year, but, um, yeah, it's great to work on that. And, yeah, we wanted to sort of definitely do that sort of, a little bit trippy, obviously, not like full blown psychedelic, but that sort of a little bit almost odd 80s sort of sci fi B movie yeah. vibe to it. Yeah, um, it's definitely. Yeah. It's sort of like Rocky Horror esque in parts as well, which I quite like. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if everyone puts that in metal videos, but like it's cool. Yeah, it's nice to see. But uh, yeah, no, that was, that was, that was great fun. Um, one of our yeah. mates just in that outfit for. Yeah. Six hours getting covered in tons of tons of lube. <laughs> <laughs> when in Paris? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. That was the only holiday I went on last year. I think was going going into a basement in Paris to play with lube and prosthetics for four days. So yeah, <laughs> that was good. Now, how much um, creative input with the uh, the visuals and the concept that the band had? Um, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, we, as I say, they're Victor's um, friends from back in the day. So, um, there's very much sort of back, obviously, they've got a few ideas of their, their own and stuff, but we'll tend to go to them with a sort of outline of this is the sort of narrative around either the song or the video, and then they'll come back with a few ideas. Um, but yeah, I mean, even down to sort of some of the direction. Uh, when me and Victor were flown out there, we spent the sort of night beforehand just make, going through everything. So, um, yeah, yeah, it's a sort of very much a team effort, I'd say, but it's, uh, it's nice because they, they definitely sort of get where we're coming from. I mean, it definitely helps with Victor having grown up with them all, obviously. And, um, but, yeah, no, they're a, they're a great bunch of lads. Um, and, yeah, so I think, what was I thinking? Yeah, yeah, I think we had the full sort of storyboards sort of agreed on between us before we went out there. That's um, good. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. Uh, but I mean, they're all into, um, they're quite into the like metal and not every, not all of them, but quite a few of them are. So they're, uh, they're into the music and, and I'm sort of, I'd say, because they've sort of followed us and been with us throughout as well. I think we've sort of built up a good, a good sort of rapport over the years. Cool. And uh, speaking of visuals, the artwork for the album is gorgeous as well. Oh. Really, really nice. Yeah, again, it's, uh, it's a bit Melikesh like, and it's also, it also reminds me of um, uh, the art of setting a blaze, the Manta album from a few years ago as well, which is oh, yeah, yeah. Um, who did the art for this one? Um, so that's a guy called Marold um, Van Hastren. He's also he's done a bit of stuff with I think recently with Baroness as well, um, but he'd done a couple of t-shirt designs for us in the past um, cool. but, um so we'd approached him for the album um very much with the idea of it being obviously like the full gatefold inside outside um but yeah he's done an amazing job and and again that's one where we've sort of given him a sort of brief to go off and he's just come back with some amazing stuff that has been very little to change i think we maybe changed some of the coloring on it and Bit of back and forth between the band because obviously we have that sort of input uh, with him, but no, nah, nah, he's, he's been great as well. Awesome, yeah, it's, it's 
again, it, I think it actually represents the music quite well as well. And, and it is very, um, um, what's the word? It's definitely a metal cover, but at the same time, it's also quite elegant. Which is... Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, we've got that sort of juxtaposition of the sort of inner and outer bit where it's the, obviously a lot more the sort of elegance on the outside and then the, the stuff on the inside, which I think is sort of how the music on the album as well is definitely sort of set up. Um, but yeah, I think with that, we've definitely gone, I mean, we've sent Meryl sort of all the lyrics. I think, yeah, this one, we actually had the artwork done before we went in to record, mm-hmm. um, or as we were recording, so we've definitely sort of gone down the route of going, yeah, we've sort of gone over, obviously, the, the narrative throughout the album, had an idea of the themes and, and had that sent to him, so that was actually really nice to have as well, because it just mm-hmm. sort of like ties everything in as you're recording as well, to sort of see the first few images come through from that was, uh, yeah, it's really nice to have. Cool. And uh, this is the first full length through Metal Blade Records, mm, um, yeah. which obviously, like I've spoken to a lot of bands that have just recently signed with Metal Blade, and they all say the same thing, oh, it's a dream come true, and all this kind of thing. Um, how did uh, you get in contact with Metal Blade to begin with? Um, so we've been, we'd played out in the States um, three years ago now and we'd spoken to them out there sort of briefly. Um, The management we had at the time had spoken to them as well. Um, But I think Alan Avery, um, he'd actually been in touch with us sort of directly around that time as well, separately. Um, So it's actually when we were recording the album, um, I think during the the first or second week of recording, um, him and Dudley, just got chatting basically and then I said we were looking for someone to uh, to put it out at that point and um, we weren't sure at that point where, what we were, who we, who we were going to use to put it out. Um, but yeah, so we got chatting to them and then I think over the court obviously sent them a few bits and pieces. Um, I mean, they'd, they'd, they'd heard of Sharon obviously and, um, and we'd talked to them before in the past. Um, but yeah, that very quickly went from Dudley talking to Alan to um, us starting sort of deal with them, I think, to uh, sign everything off a couple of months after, um, once they'd heard the sort of album and everything. Um, but yeah, no, that was very smooth, to be honest. And it's been, yeah, obviously, as I said, Dream Come True. Uh, it's a label that's been about for so many years and grew up on so many of their bands. Um, Sharon, it was uh, like, been on the same labels like Cult of Luna, Candaria, who I like loved way back in the day and then they went away for a bit and come back so yeah so that's that's yeah awesome and as i say they've been very very good and very sort of understanding um especially throughout the last year because it's obviously not going to have been an easy year for them with every single band on their roster suddenly unable to tour um but now they've been great all the way through really supportive of obviously delaying the album at first and then um they've been great throughout all the videos everything like that all the and back and forth so yeah, so far, fantastic. Excellent. Well, Dan, thank you very much for taking the time to speak to me this evening, mate. I really do appreciate it. Um, you look after yourself, and best of luck with the album. I shall do, mate. Shall do. Cheers for that. All the best, mate. Bye. Bye.